Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to the Fly With Us podcast. This podcast is bringing the art of conversation, self-love, self-care, mental health care and protection, life lessons, love lessons, and everything in between. Today, we're going to talk about supporting our future. I'm Lady Bounce. And I'm A Slate. All right, so there's a famous Whitney Houston song, and she says, I believe the children are the future. (laughs) Teach them well and And let let them them lead lead the the way. way. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) definitely. I love that song. I think we might have um, sung that in one of our graduations, six. Eighth sixth grade, grade. Like six, 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 sixth grade. Is that, that's that. That is the joint that's for the, the sixth grade graduation. Take classes out, they follow. Okay, yeah, for sixth grade graduation, that is the joint. Yeah, yeah, that's the okay. Yeah, not the joint, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on? What's going on, Lady Bounce? I am on cloud two hundred and fifty. Oh. Okay, because my kids graduated yesterday. Uh huh. Okay. And. I had to like, I typically don't brag, but I had to do some, uh-huh. some bragging on, uh, Facebook for a lot of reasons. Um, I had lots of kids on my caseload, you know, every year, but, um, six out of my seven seniors mm-hmm. on my caseload graduated yesterday. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> out of those six, uh-huh. one got a full ride to Sinclair. Oh, wait. One got half off tuition at Sinclair. Oh, wait. One of them, did a big grandstand yesterday and signed with the University of Miami Middletown. Yes, I seen that. Like, oh my. With that, I'm going to Miami. Uh, He's Middletown. such a ham. Yes. Woo, woo. <laughs> right. So, and then the other two have plans to join the military. Very proud of him. And one was already enlisted, right? Yes. Just, one, yes. one student wasn't there because he's, he's already been deployed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have to, uh, his mom was there and she's going to, receive his diploma and i thought awesome. she was going to come on stage to get his diploma but she was like no mm-hmm. i don't i don't want to just say his name and i'll be happy with that but uh-huh. i was like no you need to come get that this, <laughs> when when kids graduate from high school it's not for them mm-hmm. your graduation that's for your mama mm-hmm. <laughs> that's for mama and them for everybody yeah, my who, kids chose not to march yeah, yeah for really every for every it. person who's had your back taking you to school bought your school supplies fussed mm-hmm. you when your grades got low mm-hmm. your graduation and your marching is for them mm-hmm. yeah you get the piece of paper because you worked for it yeah. but don't get it twisted <laughs> that marching that's all for the that people a moment for who us got to you celebrate. there yeah absolutely and of course my baby, mm-hmm. my son's son, son mm-hmm. did graduate yesterday. He yes. was released on Monday. Yes. I talked to him every day during the week. I made him come to school to come see me and sit with me to make sure that he made it to Saturday. So wait, so you, you have to you have to share um, a little bit of that story. You have to share for, for our listeners and for other supporters of these children. Okay. So if you missed our episode a few months ago, I had a student who was not on my case, so he's just a student at our school. He mm-hmm. came, he used to come in my room every day, hang out, grab his work, sit in my room because it was quiet. He's like, can I just come in here and work? I'm like, cool. So we yeah. started talking, built this awesome relationship. Well, in October, something very unfortunate happened to him. He was arrested on an outstanding warrant from juvenile court. Mm-hmm. So he went through the court system. I was there every court day except for one because I was sick. Sorry. But <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I was problem. there. Um, I went to tutor him. I got in touch. First, I got in touch with the, the people at the school mm-hmm. to say, Hey, he is our student. What can we do to partner with you to make sure that he keeps up Beautiful. on his studies? Mm-hmm. And the lady said, I'm so glad you contacted us because we had him listed as a student of another high school. We had no idea he went Love to it. your school. Love and it. I said, No, no, mm-hmm. he's ours. Yeah. And so then the partnership began where I was um, emailing them back and forth. And they were like, okay, well, he needs this and he needs that. And they use the same um, Play-Doh. It's called Play-Doh, but, like, it's their online classes. So they use mm-hmm. the same program. So I gave them his login info so he was able to keep up on his classes. When he struggled, I went to tutor him mm-hmm. three days a week, every week, till, you know, until the, the end. But he was persistent and he continued to do the work. And oh, yes. then what happened yesterday? Yesterday he graduated. Uh huh. And then what else did he do? This this is the part that was uh, beautiful to me. He made a a Facebook post. Yes. With the side by side picture of his news story with his mugshot, mm-hmm. and then a picture of him in his cap and gown, and said, "I was on my way to prison, and now I'm on my way to college." Uh huh. 
So he had his news story and then yes. his new story. Yes. I love it. I love it. Was, it. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was so exciting to see that. And I was very happy, don't get me wrong, to see my other kids graduate yeah, absolutely. and to walk. But for him, absolutely, it, it did me in. When I, I did the welcome and I was rolling, I'm reading my little card, I rehearsed it, I got mm-hmm. everything going. As soon as I looked up and saw his face and saw him cheesing back at me, I mm-hmm. like lost it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow. And humble brag. But he was sitting in that seat because of what I did for him. Mm-hmm. And he was sitting in that seat because of him willing to do it. Yeah, he was right. willing to do the work. And sometimes that's how that these, our, ch- our children, I'm going to say our children because these are all our babies. Absolutely. Um, sometimes that's all they need is to know that somebody is there to walk with them. Um, shout out Penda James. Girl, walk with me. <laughs> but yeah, they just need to know that they have that support. If I stumble and fall, is somebody there to, you know, kind of, help me through this or Absolutely. walk, you know, to make sure I don't fall. Absolutely. And, so, I, and you did that. I had his back you like did a thousand percent. And, and even when my coworkers were, well, why are you doing this? And is he a special ed student? And if he's not, then why do you care? And I said, why don't you? No, and he was determined. Imagine if he was still like, whether you stepped in or not, and he wanted to do that work. If nobody had a stepped up and said anything, uh, apparently he's shown he's proven that he wanted to do that right that he wanted to graduate that he wanted to continue his education but if you wouldn't have said anything he would have been just washed aside absolutely period, because he wouldn't have had that opportunity because they right. didn't even think that he was a student of they would have just right and he would have he would have definitely fell through the cracks and of course falling through the cracks would have been easy for him because yeah. it's a pattern that he was already used to. Yeah, this is something we see a lot. Like, uh, I mean, these these are these are things. I, I personally, I was a student that that was failed by the right. system. You know, I went to Dayton Public Schools and then troubled youth. Ute. <laughs> youth? <laughs> I was okay. a youth. Come through, Grandma Emma, <laughs> with the youth. I was a troubled youth, and I had to go move with my auntie and live in Trotwood and do some schooling there. But when I came back, um, they put me back where I should have been a junior. They wanted me to be a freshman, retake proficiency test. My mother mm. did the best that she could at the time, but she didn't push for me. And I was like, I'm not about to do that all over. Right. Brilliant. I, I, I brag on myself. I was a brilliant student. I was in gifted classes and, and things like that. And then you want me to go redo this again. Most people mm. would say, sure, do it. You're smart enough. But no, I didn't feel like I had to. He was smart enough to say no. Yeah, and then the fact that I didn't feel like nobody was pushing for me. Hey, this is too hard for me. I quit. But I went on and because uh, my mother did say, well, at least take the GED. And then there was a Miss Lewis over at Longfellow who is still an educator now who pushed for me to take the GED. And I I got my GED in two days. But it took the support of others, uh, family members and members of the community and educators (laughs) To encourage me. Now, enough about me, ha. Huh? Let's talk more <laughs> about our future, okay? Our you future. Know, our future. Because, you know, we, we, we have our moments to shine. But I, too, I attended your graduation. I your was so students, glad. I was like, yay! <laughs> at Dayton Business Technology, uh, the Dayton Business Technology High School graduation, which was at the convention center. And Carolyn Seymour, you are always beautiful. I love seeing you usher us through you know, mm-hmm. that you do so often. Um, and we had Grandmaster Steve Allen as the, um, keynote speaker, um, who, who just nailed it with never would have made it. Sometimes a lot of us wouldn't have made it if we didn't have anybody to, uh, support us through. But I also attended another graduation and there was Asia Hayes who was over on Cincinnati and Bolander Street. It's called the Unity Banquet, Banquet Center. Center now. Yep. And she is a part of a program where um, members of the community, educators, leaders, teachers, nurturers, are mentoring young people, grades four through eight, and they are called the Future Stars of Dayton. And they had the Future Stars Forever graduation. And I was asked to come down and speak to the kids with everything that was going on, Mm -hmm. the lit exchange, the graduation. There was so much going on. I got to drop off a book, but I got to go down there and allow these kids to speak to me and through me. So I was able to put the microphone down, which is one of the things I love to do, 
and go up to them without having a poem in hand because that's what was asked of me. Right. And that's where I'm at now with the podcast and everything is um, where am I best serving my, my, my purpose? How am I utilizing my gifts most efficiently? And like I was talking to you earlier, like I don't, I don't think I should continue podcasting. Like I don't feel like I'm using my gifts fully. I'm going to trust the process and, and, yeah, because I totally be patient, disagree with that. But you know, hey. be patient. But hey, you know, we'll <laughs> see what happens with that. But my my thing, you know, my first love has always been poetry. Yes, always been poetry and people. But not I love everybody, okay? But <laughs> young people, young people. I have a very special place in my heart, and I've always wanted to be able to work with and mentor young people. So there. I were talking to the kids and one of the pieces I brought up was a declaration that I use um, with the students that I work with in Dayton Leadership Academy. With the right life village. With the right life village. Pipelines yes. and legacies. Yes, and we all are part of the right life village, um, which is working responsibly and triumph efficiently through love, inspiration, faith, and empowerment. So I put the mic down. I asked the kids, repeat after me. So I'm up there doing my little jingle thing, right? And they ready. They yeah. ready to vibe. They like, hey, yeah. they ready. They ready. They ready because we said I am enough. You know, we're doing that. I am enough. I am more than what you think of me. Ask me how. So we're going through that. And I was like, no, I don't want you to sing it. I want you to say it. I want you to believe it. And I want you to right. it. So they said it. I am enough. I am more than what you think of me. Ask me how I know because my thoughts help me see. I am the only extraordinary me. I am a legend creating a legacy and I believe in my destiny. And they let that be shown with their words, with their actions, with the way they were dressed in their suits and ties. They had all these Black Panther balloons and Wakanda forever. And it was just beautiful seeing that this is our future. Yes. And at Dayton Tech graduation, business tech graduation, this is our future. Yes. If that is our future, man, I'm here to tell you, I am so looking forward i'm so here for it i'm here for it i'm here for it <clears throat> so that was beautiful and shout out to um to um um myora and 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 bean who had the um lit exchange going on i went to the wrong church but they were at the mckinley church and they're also doing something uh, this weekend they were at the mckinley Ch- exchange donating and swapping uh, children's books so mm-hmm. I thought that that that's beautiful too because we all know, looking at your t-shirt, education is freedom. Mm-hmm. We know that shout out Central State. We know that readers are leaders and leaders are readers. You got to yes. take that each one, teach one to another level. So that's that. <laughs> now, what else has been happening this weekend? Um, let me see. I'll be teaching. In a, a jumpstart program mm-hmm. at Meadowdale High School for three weeks. And it's cool. their students that are entering high school. Mm-hmm. So they just finished eighth grade. So we're kind of giving them like a little bit of a, of a crash course, yeah. if you will. Pre, I call it, um, fronting, if you will. Front, it's called front loading in the, in the world of education. So we are letting them know what to expect once they get into high school. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes, well, not even sometimes. I'm preparing them. I All like of that. the time. Kids are finished with eighth grade and teachers go, ah, next year you're going to high school. And that's that. Mm-hmm. But there's got to be something that happens in between. Yeah. So when they get to high school, it's not so overwhelming. It's not so, oh mm-hmm. my God, nobody told me. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're, we're going to be doing. Like I'm going to be teaching language arts. So we're going to, I'm going to teach them the basics of writing a research paper. Mm-hmm. And we're going to write a children's book. Woohoo! <laughs> yes. So now I have to decide if I want each student to write their own book or if we should collab on one big book. Um, I don't, I don't know. That, I, that's going to be your call. And I think you'll get more of that while you, while you're working with the students. You'll see which way to go. Um, I know the way in the Right Life Village, we've done it. Um, I have the one, Eagles Awaken Aware, which is an anthology. It's a collection of poems by right. each of the students. Um, that one, which I'm working now to raise funds to get each student their own personal copy and pushing for it to be in the library. And then we have another poem that has turned into one collective children's poem, which is Magic Supernatural. I mean, book, Magic right. Supernatural Powers. So it, it really depends, but we will have a collection of four books total with over 90 um, 
over 62 kids work, but one group gets two books because they participated from two books. Wow. But it's up to you. And that's, that, that's where I am right now. And, and that's, that's the thing. There's only 37 kids and they're broken up into groups of five. Mm-hmm. So I'll wow. have five periods a day with five kids in each period. That's good because you get to go one on one. Right. So we. A little closer to. At, oh, absolutely. Like, and they ask me, like, well, do you need a chair? And I'm like, I just need a student chair, like the same yeah. chair they sit in. Yeah. Like, no, don't you want this Yeah, I tend this to chair? in circles sometimes. Don't you want this? I'm like, no, I want to sit at the table with them mm-hmm. and we work on this thing together. Like, yeah. it's supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be school. Yeah. yeah. It is It is definitely not supposed to be school. And shout out to uh, Shola Odumade. Shout out, Shola. Shout out, Shola, <laughs> who said... I don't want it to be like school. I love I her. want you to have fun with the kids. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wait, you want me to have fun? Like you're giving me yeah. permission to have fun with them. And she said, yeah. absolutely. So there's language arts. There's a life skills class. Mm-hmm. There's a science class. There's a Spanish class mm-hmm. and a math class. Mm-hmm. And the science class, he's already said, we're just doing science experiments. And I'm going to walk them through the scientific process mm-hmm. because they, they are required in freshman year to do a science project. Mm-hmm. So he's like, if I can walk them through that process, it will make their, their science projects easier when they, when they get there. Mm-hmm. But he's like, we're doing experiments. He was like, we're going to play with slime. Mm-hmm. We're going to dissect the frog. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wait, I mm-hmm. dissect the frogs yeah. in the summer. Yeah. He, he said, yeah, he said, we're doing all this. Maybe said, I can get Mr. C to come visit. Mr. C is pretty good. Oh, nice. Mr. C is pretty good. Shout but out, this Mr. C. Is, shout out, Mr. C. See, this, this is one of the things in the Right Life Village. I'm going to shout out Kristen Matthews. I'm going to shout out Miss Mills at Dayton Leadership Academies for really, really pushing for those students to be as creative and free with their creativity as they can be in the SEAT program. Um we're down there now from um, the 3rd until the 20th of this month um, for their summer program. And one of the things I do uh, without having the formal background of a teacher, I can only um, I can only be me. I can only do what I can do. And my, my thing is creating. And my first love, again, is poetry. So <laughs> the last week, we, we, we experimented with popsicles. How about that? And we, because I do a thing called poetry pops. Right. But we do um poetry pops. We had Sierra Leone come in and do a demonstration before, um, with the, they had a beautiful poem poems that they created. Some of the kids that didn't even speak all for like all year. The whole mm-hmm. time I've seen it. They had very little to say, just rushed out on paper because they had a different way to express themselves and it was opened up to them in another way where they could understand and be free without thinking, Oh, I'm gonna get an ARF. Right. Or, oh, I'm going to get in trouble if I say it this way. Or, right. oh, this is not written the right way. That That's not what I want them to do. I want them to just be creative and be free. So they even got their wings um, last week, last Thursday. They got feathers. <laughs> so You and your feathers. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of feathers, you did find your feather. Ooh, I found my feather. Yes. <laughs> and I have my feather. And I'm working to preserve my feather and... Shout out Most High God. That's my feather and I'm keeping my feather and that's all I'm going to say about my blessed feather. I like it. Yeah, my blessed feather. So yeah, that's that. Um, But yeah, where I have to just keep saying that my thing right now is really poetry. These kids making sure that they get the opportunity to shine, making sure that they know that their words have power, their contribution to our future, to our now is very important to me and I can't wait and I'm hoping that some of our listeners are listening. I can't wait until I am in a position, which will be very soon, to supply these students with their own books and share their works and, and, and rights with the world. Because they are definitely working responsibly in triumph, as your student show, in triumph, efficiently mm-hmm. through love, inspiration, faith, and empowerment. I mean, I'm just excited. I'm just excited. I'm excited, I'm excited for you. I'm just like listening to you talk about it and seeing your face light up. It's like, like I'm, I'm that's excited. that's it. You know, like if anybody, like if I go to my my regular nine to five every day, that's that's one thing. I love being there for them and being compassionate and cleaning. I love that. I love podcasting. I love sitting here talking with you. I love that. But my heart, my love, my place is in the right life village with these children. With poetry, with the pen and pencils and feathers and beads and all that. So that's, that's where I'm at. (laughs) (laughs) That's where I'm at on that. 
So um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with, with that part. But right mm-hmm. now, let's continue flying, you know, because this is a part of okay. first loving yourself. You got you to gotta be honest with, with where you are. But we got to do some more talking about our future. So we did have some unfortunate um, things that we saw. Um, yes. We lost uh, one of the members of our community, one of our creative members of the, our community, Mike Lansky, our Michael Hall, as some know us, Mr. Silas B. Nevings, or Brandon Stargell, as some know, Brother John T. Tinsley. Um, I say brother because I know his mother, um, and we grew up in the family, uh, I mean, in the, in the community. Um, mm-hmm. um, so they, they grew up in the same neighborhood as I did uh, in Western Manor and, again, um, in Edgewood Courts. So I, I'm sending light and love to, to Chandra and to um, the families of these, these, I'll say children because they still are children. Some that's somebody's baby. Absolutely. And then I'm sending a lot of love up to to Jalen, um, to Jalen, um, Nunu, <laughs> and Treva. I'm sending love out to y'all because she's still fighting. Um, so we have to still, you know, be mindful of what is happening while yes. it's happening, and we have to think what what do we do next. Um, Mr. Neil Boer, uh, thank you for transporting our members in the community on that RTA. Yes. Um, he was transporting some members in the community and he transcended, transcended to, um, higher heights. Yes. Of legendary service. So thank you, Mr. Neil Boer. And on that same subject, uh, we will be celebrating the life of Miami neighbors here soon. Uh, we need volunteers. Her mother needs volunteers, vendors. Creative ideas, funds, love, light, and support. Yes, support. We need more community support. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm loving what everybody is doing for the um, tornado victims. Uh, donations, donations, donations. But baby, listen, <laughs> we got to get to that next step. As Yala Van Zandt said, the next step. Um, I think it was West Dayton. No, no, no. What's going on, Dayton? Said phase two of triage is over. We need money and we need volunteers now. People need money for um, deductibles. They they need yes. money for um, housing in the meantime. Yes, security deposits and rent or hotel stay for those that didn't have insurance. And we need hands on souls and spirits, able bodies and minds out there working to organize some of these donations, to clean up some of this mess, to build and restore. And and if if nothing else to pat somebody on the back and say you are doing a good job with what you have we have to support so um uh the the service for Michael Howell will be at Bow Believers on June 12th on Wednesday um and that is what's happening remember we um we 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 we've done our work and our service and still are but we cannot forget about the most, I'll say it, and I'll say it boldly, the most important members of our community, and that is these children. Yes. They are watching us. They are listening to us. They are learning from us. And if we look closely and listen closely, however you take it, they're leading us if we allow them the room to grow. So um, um, let's just um, think on that for a minute. And um, I continue think, to celebrate. I think that leads right into our self care assignment. Wait, Wait before we get there. Okay, I I, I, I got to remember because we still loving ourselves. Okay, I have to remember why we celebrate in lives. Our only lives look only lives. Our only lives. <laughs> our only lives. I have to remember we are celebrating. We are celebrating my sister's fourteen <laughs> days of 13, Nikki. Yes, thirteen. Our, thirteen days of Nikki. <laughs> our darling, darling Nikki. Uh, <laughs> so, so um, she she don't want to say it, but I'm gonna say it for. We'll say it this way. She has two beautiful books that I think we all could benefit from yes. reading. Um, so share a little bit about that. The first one is called The Black Girl's Guide to Self Care. It's a thirty day self care workbook. And so each day it has something where I'm supposed to do and then write and reflect 
So I'm really right. going to have to like get involved and, and stay on my schedule. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do that though. I've been getting really yes. better about that carving out the time that's just for me. I love it. Me, I do that. I do and that. so then this book is called Daily Intention for Brown Girls. And it's kind of like the Ooh. same thing. So every day it's an intention, something I affirm today. I'm going to be this. Ooh. I'm going to appreciate that. I'm going to let go of this or let go of that. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to attract the things that I want. And yes. So <laughs> it's something to write every day, which is really important because for me, I am a talker and overthinker by nature. Mm-hmm. So being able to get these thoughts out of me mm-hmm. and put them somewhere else is amazing because then it frees up space in my mind to mm-hmm. think about something else. See, and I can't, I got the, I got to write it down. I have to talk it out. Then I got to do, and that's where I'm at. I got to do some action. And I have to mention this book because you have great, Great books <laughs> here at the Fly With Us station, so podcast station. So we're going to shout out uh, even Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life. I haven't read this book, but I'm peeking through it. And I'm going to ask my sister one day when I know I got time, can I borrow this book? Absolutely. So, I mean, yes. Yeah, so, but celebrating these, these, these two books that she's gotten already on her 13 days of Nikki, which mean her birthday coming, y'all, her birthday coming. Right. <laughs> and shout out to Picket Fence. For always um, celebrating um, and supporting our sister, our Lady Bounce, or um, however you affectionately know her as. For me right now, she's darling Nikki. <laughs> so, <laughs> for Lady Bounce. <laughs> and we going to move on over because this is one of our big sisters in the community. And, and um, we're going to talk about our self-care assignment right now. Our self-care assignment for this week will be becoming a big brother or sister. Now, y'all watch me as I multitask or listen to me as I multitask because I'm getting good at this. (laughs) Are you ready to make a difference in a child's life? You can be that needed support, excuse me, that so many children are searching for. It's as simple as inquiring online and filling out an application. The organization will meet with you for an in-person interview to get an idea what type of child you would like to mentor and to help make the right match. They do background checks um, to ensure that, ensure that the child is safe. And you can spend quality time with the child doing homework, enjoying sports events, or just inspire and motivate them to do better. I am a member of a couple of uh, mentor groups but one in particular is um wise in trotwood and she has a wonderful tutoring um service there and they encourage the kids inspire them and and get them going um further towards their future but another another community organization that i'd like to um to um support is West Day and Strong. And West Day and Strong is looking for volunteers right now at the DeSoto Bass and Boys and Girls Club from nine to twelve thirty on Mondays through Thursdays. So if you have um any time that you can commit to one or more of those days, um you can reach out to um Amaha Selassie on Facebook or you can hit us up on the Fly With Us podcast and we'll give you more information about that. And that's from June third to August first. And it's West Dayton Strong. They're looking for volunteers to support our children. All right. So with that being said, we're going to run right into our mindfulness minute so we can kind of stay on time with our podcast. This is going to be about supporting children's mental health, tips for parents and educators. This whole thing is kind of long. So I'm going to post the rest on our Facebook page when this episode airs. But the two top things that, that you can do that I want you to do right now when it comes to supporting our children in their mental health. One. Create a sense of belonging. Feeling connected and welcomed is essential to children's positive adjustment, self-identification, and sense of trust in others and themselves. Building strong and positive relationships among students, school staff, and parents is important to promoting their mental wellness. Promote resiliency, which is a big thing we've seen in the wake of the tornadoes. Mm -hmm. Adversity is a natural part of life, and being resilient is important to overcoming challenges and good mental health connectedness and competency helping others and successfully facing difficult situations can foster resilience in our youth word 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 (laughs) and last but not least we have to have our brain science brain science so did you know that there's actual brain science that is connected to mentoring children what 
Positive mentors help tap into the neuroscience of success in children. Mm. When children see you doing well in life, they are able to observe you, watch you, learn from you. Yes. You don't have to be perfect. You can make mistakes. In fact, making mistakes is good because it shows our youth that you can overcome your mistakes with proper thinking and planning and also gives them tips and ideas for when they face adversity in their own lives, yes. how to get around it and to be a victor mm -hmm. and not a victim yes. of their circumstances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> I love it too. I believe it. I've witnessed it. <laughs> I, I believe it too. I believe that I'm mm -hmm. exactly where I'm supposed to be doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And if I was doing something else, it wouldn't be as much fun mm -hmm. and it wouldn't turn out as good. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to say on that note, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love podcasting, but um, I'm going to be doing a lot more in the right life village in the weeks and days coming and i'll be there to support so with that being said <laughs> thank you for flying with us you can catch us on soundcloud <laughs> facebook youtube instagram and twitter uh-huh and thank you for the feedback we received about people who are actively doing the self-care assignments mm -hmm. every day we seem to be getting a lot more feedback from our instagram posts of people saying i did that's this nice. i like this yes. so that's amazing keep it up be sure to email us at, at fly with us la at gmail.com gmail <laughs> i'm lady bounce and i am a slate peace peace you didn't even say